Struggling to move your nonprofit forward? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Nonprofit Architect, where we are giving you the actionable steps you need to launch and grow your nonprofit organization. Now, here's your host, Travis Johnson. Hey, welcome. I'm Travis Johnson. This is the Nonprofit Architect Podcast, helping you build a stronger nonprofit. I am here today with Trish Lito. Lito. She will spell it out. She will pronounce it for you. She is the genius and the master crafter behind the Five Minute Facebook Live Group Blueprint. She will tell you all about it. Trish, welcome. So glad you're here today. Glad we can make a time that works for both of us. Yay. Tell me about your experience, your little business, not a little business, your business doing five minute Facebook lives and how that impacts people. It's a really long story, but I'll condense it down to the Cliff's Notes version. I am somebody, I'm a creature who I take massive action when I get pissed off about something. I got pissed off a little over three years ago, probably closer to four years ago now, because I was failing miserably in a multi-level marketing business. I was working for corporate America, had two kids in two years, and I needed extra money. So I'm working this MLM business and I had my worst day, my worst month ever, this one particular night that I was on track to make a lot of money. I didn't make a lot of money and I got super pissed off and I turned that into going, okay, I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm going to find people who make a lot of money online and I'm going to start mm-hmm. learning from them. Right. Mm-hmm. So I started to learn from them and the Gary V, Grant Cardone, Russell Brunson, Amy Porterfield, all these people. And then what happened was um, I got in, overwhelmed with, with information. I noticed <laughs> that there was a common, a common thing that they were all telling their story first and foremost. Like I went from product vomiting in an MLM to going on to YouTube and saying, Oh, wait a second. These people are telling their story first, then they're selling the thing. Hmm, mm-hmm. That makes sense. Let them get to know you. Right. And you know, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, exactly. Buy my product. Nice product. Buy my product. By the way, I'm Travis. No, no, buy my product. Right. 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 That's what I was doing. It was like, Hey, buy this shake. It's $140 when you buy it for me, but you could probably get it at Whole Foods for $20. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. It sucked. So so I went online. I'm trying to learn from all of these, you know, the, the, the quote unquote gurus out there. And I got super overwhelmed. So then I reached out to some of my industry expert friends that were doing the things that Gary was teaching, Grant was teaching, all these people. And they were making a significant amount of money. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hey, how about there's this Facebook live thing. I've been playing around with it by myself, but I'm like sweating bullets every time I go live by myself. How's about I interview you on a Facebook live? and introduce you to my audience. And we can start, our people can start to learn what it is that you're doing, that you're taking what Gary and Grant teach us and you're making it your own thing. And so that launched the Expert Connection Facebook Live show. And so it was going great, but I was going live for a really long time. And then I saw other people doing it too. They just go live for a little long time and they're sitting on a Facebook Live and there was no structure, there was no real content and there was no call to action. And that's around the time that also everybody and their brother were running Facebook ads. And I'm going, okay, when we run Facebook ads, we capture video views based on how long the people are watching the video. So there's three seconds, seven seconds, 10 seconds, and then 25, 50, and 95% of the video watched. So I was like, hmm, let me think about this for a second. And for those of you who are listening to this, I'm holding up a sticky notepad right now. I sat down in my office that very same afternoon that I was thinking about, hey, people are live for way too long. And I'm like, I can do this. I can do this in five minutes. So I wrote it down and I said, okay, five minute lives. First 30 seconds then is your intro. Two to three minutes, you cover your topic. One minute Q&A with your audience saying hi to everybody. 30 second close with a strong call to action. So I started doing them. And I, and I had a group at the time, I had a free Facebook group and I'd go live and I'd do like, Hey, tech tip with Trish. And I would do a five minute live and I teach people how to create an Instagram story. Mm-hmm. And then my call to action would be, Hey, you know, go buy my course. If you want to learn how to do this more or whatever, right. Or book a call with me. And Travis, it took off like wildfire, like five minute lives just like took off all these people are like, holy crap, holy crap, just doing this thing. This is amazing. We want to do five minute lives. It's like, cool, go do five minute lives. And they were, and you could see people starting to gain more confidence 
And then I was like, okay, wait a minute. This is a money-making situation. I had a couple of speaking gigs come out of it. People would reach out to me and go, your live videos are incredible. We, I want to learn more. I want to teach my sales team. I want you to come to my event and speak about live video, Facebook lives, how you're doing this thing, how you're building this business. And so that started happening. Mm -hmm. And then in November of last year, I spoke in an event and that's where I met my business coach. And he's like, because my presentation was how to monetize live video content. I hadn't actually, which had a piece inside of it for five minute lives. I get off the stage, I go to the back of the room and there's this guy, Chad Thibodeau, who's my business coach. And he's like, hey, can I, can I coach you for free for just a second? I was like, sure, absolutely. I just, I <laughs> yeah. He was the keynote of the day and I hadn't even seen him speak yet. And he goes, uh, I loved your presentation. He's like, you teach like I teach. He's like, you simplify things. You make it okay for people. You give people permission to do this thing and, and step into their zone of genius. He's like, but your whole presentation, it's five minute lives. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I talked about five minute lives. He's like, no, no. You talked about how to monetize live video content. And there was a part about five minute lives. He said, your entire presentation can be five minute lives. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that when I do. My, he's like, watch my keynote. Mm. I was like, okay. So <laughs> done. And then uh, in early December, we, we LLC'd me. We trademarked five minute lives. Late December, Gary V's company reached out to me and asked me to be a speaker at Agent 2021 in Miami Gardens, Florida. So I spoke at VaynerMedia's event in January. And then at the end wow. of February, I resigned from my mortgage job of over 18 years. And I went all in on this crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that story wasn't too long. That was a super close notes version. <laughs> no, no, that's perfect. That gives us the origin story, gives us our why, what you do, how you refined it, that you didn't do it right in the first time, that you're a human too, even though I think most people think you're uh, you're superwoman. Uh, <laughs> I am the superwoman who fails forward. I suck at a lot of things, trust me. <laughs> oh, yeah. All I do is just pile up my mountain of failures. And before you know it, I'm head and shoulders above everybody else. Um, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Just, that's, I mean, that's what it is. You fail a whole bunch of times. And as long as you take a step up and you're standing on the failure, pretty soon you're like, hey, the view's pretty nice up here. People are like, you did all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, like, no, no, you did all of that stuff that you talk about. I'm like, well, yeah. Well, how'd you do it? Well, first off, I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> then I sucked some more. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a desire and I went out and I sucked. And then I talked to another person and I sucked just like a little bit less. And then I went out and I sucked some more, but I kept showing up and I kept doing it. And before you know it, I, here I am doing stuff. And you look at the list of the things that I've done. I'm sure the list of things that you've done and it's a mile long. And you're like, how the heck did I get here? I don't feel like I'm anyone special, but if you, you, know, you don't quit, you win. But what are we doing here today, right? We're here today to talk about how to strengthen nonprofits. And Trish has this very special skill. Maybe you heard of it. Maybe she talked about a five-minute Facebook Lives where you can go on, get in front of a uh, camera, and you can talk about your message and your vision and what your goal is and where you struggle at and what you need. And I know we all need more resources or more money. That's not really an answer, right? If you need a thousand dollars by the end of the week, that's a something. If you need more resources, no one, no one can help you out with more resources, right? So, Trish, if you can walk us through, really, I mean, you gave us the time frame of a five minute live, but how would you structure that? To, I mean, you're not really selling in a nonprofit, but you are selling, right? You're using that business principle of walking through a story to get to a vision or a goal or an end game and it takes donor to money to do something, how would you structure a five minute live around that? Well, the first thing that I would do is based on the nonprofit, I would go find out exactly what the pain points are of your ideal person that uses your nonprofit. And let's face it, at the end of the day, just because you're a nonprofit doesn't mean that you not you are not actually profitable, right? So it's just the way that you file your business. It's the way that, you're, that your business is, is looked at, and that's great. And, and if I may, Travis, I want to say this out loud because I talk to a lot of nonprofits and I help, I help a lot of them out. And I actually interviewed, um, I interviewed a, a gentleman who's got a phenomenal nonprofit that helps veterans with the whole transition and, and do that whole like entrepreneurship, like incubator piece, right? The most important thing that I want to say is if, if you're a startup nonprofit, please know it is going to take a lot of time and effort to get 
what you want to happen out of that. And I'm not talking a lot of time and effort in a couple of months. I'm saying it might take you a year plus to gain the social media following that you want and the things that happen that you want to happen, especially if you don't have the funds to put forth into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you want to have a very actionable process to do the social media thing and really start expediting that a little bit more, then take some notes and pay attention. Okay. Write this there, down. Everybody write this down. Everybody write this down. Everybody right? write this down. Yeah. There, there, I know that there are nonprofits out there that help veterans with different of resources for, for certain things. There's a nonprofit that helps veterans get into VA loans, right? They get to help them qualify for VA loans faster. Okay. So what I would do, there's a website that you can go look up information specifically that and find out exactly how typical a typical veteran is looking up how to start that process right now online. So you go to this website, you can ask it up to two questions for free per day. It's called answerthepublic.com. Answerthepublic.com, okay? If you go on to answerthepublic.com, you can plug in some keywords. There's a little search bar. You scroll up a little bit, little search bar, and you can start typing in a few keywords in there. For instance, how to get a VA loan, right? VA loan process, how to apply for a VA loan, how to qualify for a VA loan, right? Minimum credit, credit score requirements for a VA loan. By the way, if you reach out to Chris Griffith, he's going to educate you on all that stuff. Hashtag vetted VA, just saying, okay? And there is no credit score requirement for a VA loan. It's all these big banks that tell you that otherwise. But my point is you find out all these questions and what happens is within seconds, this huge schematic will come up it looks like a huge spider. It's a big like round ball and it's got all these legs that come out out of it with all the types of questions that people are asking on the internet right now on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo, on uh, Facebook, on in YouTube. Like there's all these questions. People are looking this stuff up every single day right now, right? <laughs> so you go in there and you grab those exact questions that you can answer really well and you start going Facebook Live with that exact question as your title or description. Don't go live without a title or, or a title or description because people will scroll right right past your live video. Right. But if you do a Facebook live and it, let's say you're somebody who says, "Hey, I have a face a face for radio." Okay? I get that a lot. <laughs> for you? No, people tell me oh. that that that's a, that's like they're <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no. I was like, we got to talk about your self-esteem, Fresh. You got, you got some problems, Fresh, if you think you're not fit for the screen. But uh, <laughs> that's a whole other story, I guess. Woo! Yeah. It's, it's people telling me that they feel uncomfortable because they don't think that they're attractive, that, that hey, I, you know, I look fat. I don't like the way that I look and whatever, right? So if you're one of those people, I'm, going, I'm not just going to tell you go live anyway. But what I'm going to tell you is invest in a software like Zoom. And then you can put together a little presentation slide deck. You can use Google Slides for free. If you have all you need is a Gmail account and you can start, you can use Google Slides for free and then you can just share your screen. Even if sharing your screen is just a matter of like three or four slides with just some talking points. And then you just share your screen and you speak and you do a Facebook Live and this Facebook Live says how to qualify for a VA loan. Or three things to avoid when 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 a you know when when applying for a VA loan, right? Because it could also be if there's a how to, then your how to could be what how to avoid you know hiccups with the VA loan process or whatever, right? How to avoid these hiccups with um, transitioning out of the military, whatever your nonprofit does, and then all you have to do is your call to action is for them to book a call with you. That's it. There's no sales pitch. There's nothing. They can just book a call with you. And now what happens is you don't have to worry about tracking clicks to your website, your nonprofit website. You're inviting people to book a phone call with you. Now you're having an actual conversation with people who need you and you've built the no like and trust factor with them. Mm -hmm. Right. But the more that your Facebook live now you're done with the live video. Maybe you booked the calls. Maybe you haven't booked the calls. But now you can download that Facebook Live and you can upload the audio automatically onto a podcast 
like on anchor.fm. Mm-hmm. Anchor.fm is totally free. All you have to do is just upload the MP4. And from there, the second you post that podcast episode onto anchor.fm, it's a, it's it was just acquired by Spotify. So it goes out to nine other podcast uh, um, platforms, right? So Google Play, iTunes, uh, Spreaker. There's like a bunch of them. Up to nine platforms pull up podcast episode. So now you take that podcast episode and you post it onto LinkedIn and you post it onto to Facebook and you post it onto your website as a blog, right? And now what you're doing is you're, because you ha- it's the same question you're it's how to this or how to that right you're answering the public Mm -hmm. and the more you do this over and over again the more people you're going to have 50 percent of people who listen to a podcast and 50 percent of people who watch a facebook live but the more you do that the more you are being socially acknowledged because visibility is all about using social media effectively right Mm -hmm. and then the other thing you can do is repurpose that video and post it onto youtube and so now when people look up the question on Google and they want a video version, they can just, they'll play your video and make sure you have that description, book a call. That's it. Just book a call. I think that's really important because that's a way for people to find you without looking for you specifically. They're looking for that answer to the question and then they see that you've answered that and they're like, oh, what is this organization? What is this nonprofit? What is this group all about? And before you know it, you're bringing all these people in that had questions about something you have the answer to. And when it gets out there, like, like Trish is talking about, then you are rising in the Google rankings and they can find you on the front page. And it's just nuts. I've used, uh, I've used this answer to the public to write a list. I have 700 questions in the background behind Trish right now on my Excel spreadsheet. I was like, is that the thing she talked about the other day? I'm going to look real quick. Yes. Yes, it is. That's an ask question. And yes, yeah. I still need to do this myself. Well, and here's the other thing too, guys, especially if you're in like a brick and mortar nonprofit, um, you know, go get your Google My Business, right? So you go to googlemybusiness.com and what happens is Google will say, hey, you know, cool, you want to be on the map. So it basically put you on the map, put your business on the map as far as Google is concerned. And that's that's like, that's like search engine optimizing your business on steroids because once you're on Google My Business, what happens is you'll apply to be on it and they'll say, great, what's your, what's your address? And they'll send you a little card in the mail, okay? Because they want to verify that your address exists, right? Mm-hmm. So you get your little card, little postcard in the mail and then you'll go onto Google and you'll get specific, they'll, they'll tell you, they give the instructions step-by-step on how to do this. But you plug in your little verification code and then you start making, you start like adding more content. So if you look up Trish Lito right now, I'm on Google. My bi- I'm on Google My Business. I have my headshot on there. Uh, I think I might have added my speaker reel in there because you could put a little video clip. So you've got somebody who did maybe an anger video for you, some kind of a bumper video, whatever. That's really strong, right? And then add images to um, to to show people what your business does. So some of the images that I have in there is me speaking because I'm a speaker, right? Another image might be five minute live so that I can teach people, hey, this is what I do. But you want to keep doing that and put yourself on the map because the more you do that, then Google's going to be like, oh, snap, this person is, I just said, oh, snap. Oh my God, I just aged myself. That's awesome. But (laughs) (laughs) Google's going to recognize you for being the business on a local level as, as well as on the internet, right? So if you're a, br- a brick and mortar nonprofit on a local level, if people are looking that stuff up, they're going to find you first, especially if you're continuously putting good content out there, right? Mm-hmm. And live video is consumed over seven times more than any other content on the internet. So that's why I say, you know, do the five minute lives. If you go over five minutes, that's fine. But if you stay less than 10 minutes, then you can immediately put that repurpose video onto LinkedIn onto Instagram TV, and you can upload up to 15 minutes of video onto Pinterest. And that's really powerful too, because Pinterest is actually a search engine. So if somebody's looking up VA loan stuff and there's a pinned board of yours on there, they might find your stuff and then you can have backlinks to all kinds of things. They can book a call or they can go directly to your site. And then you can have sponsors. People do that all the time, like the cross posting, right? So 
My friend Patrick Mudge is the CEO of IC Tech USA. They've got these huge, massive roto molded coolers that they sell, right? For the fishermen and the hunter and all these different, like huge, like if they're massive. But if he's working with a nonprofit that does things like that and works with things like that, it would the nonprofit be wise of you to reach out to him and go, hey, we'd love to do some affiliate marketing on your website. Maybe you can be a sponsor, whatever you want to do. Let's work this out. Let's run a contest. Contests are going to crush, absolutely crush your social media. Like contests rock. So give away a t-shirt, tumbler, coffee mug, whatever, or a huge cooler. <laughs> but I hope that helped. I, I, I could ramble on this stuff all day. No, I think I think you're hitting the nail on the head. And if someone wants to take uh, these videos, I know you talked about Zoom. Uh, is that a function? Is that a free function? You have to pay for that on Zoom. So Zoom is, you have to have the webinar version. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about Zoom too, is Zoom will transcribe your video. You actually with get- a, With a paid version, right? Yes, with the paid version. Mm -hmm. So I pay, I actually got mine through a, um, it was like a bulk group opportunity um, with um, leverage marketing. And I get mine for, I think I pay like 25 bucks a month. But I think if you don't do that, uh, it's like $45 a month and you can get up to a thousand webinar attendees too. So if you wanted to host, which would not be a terrible idea, especially on a Facebook live, right? Um, you could host a webinar on Facebook live, or you could get people to pop onto your webinar for the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And your call to action could simply be, this is, these are all the amazing things that our nonprofit does book a call to learn how we can help you with your business or help you do this or help you yeah. do that. Right. That's, that's it. So I'm thinking right now of a friend of mine, Tammy Moses, who runs a nonprofit uh, out of Washington uh, and it's for hoarder, hoarders, people that yes. just have stuff piled up and it would be perfect for her to plug into something like this to reach a webinar audience of maybe people that won't uh, won't leave their homes to come talk to her. They can log in from home and hear what she has to say and see her message without, uh, without going anywhere. I, first of all, I'm going to give a quick shout out to my, to my female shipmate, Miss Tammy. I love her. She and I have been <laughs> for several years now. Um, and yeah, she's, what she does is amazing. And another thing that I told her guys, Always, I always think like bigger picture and I try to think outside the box with a lot of this stuff. She helps people like overcome the hoarding issue and hoarding is a really big issue, especially with elderly people, right? The elderly community. So when somebody's doing like estate planning or doing an estate sale, she could be one of the people that goes in there as a consultant to help them organize everything, right? A hired consultant, she can reach out to title companies. She needs to reach out to real estate agents wholesalers, property flippers. This is a huge thing right now and they need help with this stuff. So they hire contractors to come in. Those are like muscle men, right? If they have another person like Tammy to come in and figure out the logistics of reorganizing things and then maybe put it into a pod and like flip some of the stuff that's in there, that could be a lot of fun too. So just saying, Tammy, hope you're listening. Much love to you, girl. Tammy's <laughs> definitely getting some love on this podcast. I just talked to her earlier today. <laughs> She's got a room for uh, for rent on Airbnb. Just saying. Nice. <laughs> She's so smart. I love her. I love her. <laughs> She's definitely one of my favorites. What do you want your business to look like in three or five years? What is your goal? What are you trying to do? You know, it's so funny. People people ask that question. It's like in three to five years, I just want to speak on stage, get paid a buttload of money, <laughs> have my RV, and enjoy my children even more. That's truly like my selfish thing right now. I'm working very hard to get, you know, build up that, that, um, that audience, mm -hmm. but I do love, I, I really, there's nothing in the world to me that's more gratifying than that human connection that I get in person with people. That's really, I speak on stage selfishly because it's <laughs> the energy exchange that I get to have with people is just phenomenal. I love making that impact on somebody's life in their face. Like I love being in front of them. <laughs> I want to connect with you in your face. In your um, face. In your face. I don't think it's selfish, right? Because you get into a business in order to create a product or you get into business to not have a boss. 
right? But these businesses end up consuming all our time, all our free time, all our energy, all our money. And you're working in your business instead of on your business. You're, you're an owner operator. You're the janitor and the CEO, but you're not really an owner. And there's nothing selfish about wanting to actually be an owner and actually have more time with your family. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I'm definitely with you on the connecting thing. Uh, you know, I'm over, I'm over in Bahrain, like Trish and I are seven, not seven hours, like seven time zones uh, apart, <laughs> right? We're both Navy veterans just trying to trying to make it in this world. And I love for me that when I retire to be like a little selfish like Trish and not have to go punch a time clock because if I'm trading time for money, I'm losing. I'm not losing money, so to speak, but I'm losing time with the people that I really care about. Anyone that's served in the military knows that they've given enough time away so definitely don't uh, definitely don't think yourself are doing that. If my audience, me or my team can help you grow, change, do whatever, connect you with people, what can we do for you? Really and truly, if you want to know what I want, I want more people to share with me how five minute lives help their business. So I want you to send me an email, Trisha Trishlito.com, or I want you to go to my website. If you haven't already downloaded the blueprint, blueprints free. Yes. You get on my email list. Yes. I email you occasionally. I don't spam, but if I, if I can, it's important for me to know that what I'm doing, that my message is being received by people and that they're doing the thing. And as they're doing it, I want to know what results they're experiencing because I'm, I'm in the process. I'm getting ready to launch a new group coaching program, which I'm really excited about because I did one beta and the, the results are just phenomenal. I just talked to another client of mine um, in five to six months time. I took them from ground like zero to an eight figure business. And oh, majority- hold, on, hold, on, hold on, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> did you say eight figures? Yeah. I don't know if my listeners are paying attention or not, but six figures is like a hundred thousand. Seven is like a million. Eight figures, that's actually 10 to 99 million, just to kind of put that in perspective. So back to you, back to what you were saying. <laughs> so yeah, I've worked with a few millionaires. I'm not gonna lie. It's been it's it's um it's actually so much more fun. One of my very first high ticket clients was a multimillionaire out of Australia. And she like she spoke accolades. I've got her testimonials on my website too. Her she just gave me so many accolades, and I'm not saying this to chew my own horn. My point is, every business could use a little extra structure in one way, shape, or form. For the millionaire interior designer out of Australia, who in personal designer who was already doing quite well for herself, right? She learned that five minute lives was really loved by her audience because her audience is already catching her doing live videos. But then she started doing in five minute chunks and they're like, Oh, I can totally catch this in just five minutes. Now I've got a whole new look. I know how to wear that scarf. I know what kind of earrings I'm going to wear today. Out the door in five minutes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I found some holes in her marketing efforts and I found some missing links here and that she was, you know, missed call to action in some other videos. And she was like, Holy geez, this is amazing. And then I speak to a property wholesaling company, a, a, another client of mine, and they went from like an idea for having a Facebook group to closing like just an insane amount of live speaking events and, you know, multiple six figure group coaching packages, all of these. And they're doing all of these things. And they're like, this is an eight figure business now. And it wasn't that five, six months ago. So my point is this, okay? No matter what you have going on, if all live video did for you was give you the confidence to show up consistently Mm -hmm. and deliver that incredible content for your audience, then you're winning. If all of Facebook Live did was help a guy in a cell phone shop who's interested in wholesale property, right? Interested in being a wholesaler, and he's watching the video on his phone and one of his clients walks in and overhears the video being played on his cell phone and says, hey, I'm here to get a cell phone repaired, but I need to sell my house. Do you think you could help me? And that guy, because of that, ended up helping this woman and made it into a $33,000 profit. Isn't that fantastic? Wholesaling his 
her when first you, house. It's when crazy. You, when you share your life with other people, what happens? The relationships that happen. I mean, we met online a couple months ago through Sean Douglas or someone. Or I, I even, love her. I, shop, <laughs> I love Sean Douglas. You know, he's got a great show, Life Transformation Radio. But these little things that that we're doing now, and we're in this age where. If you're not sharing, if you're not authentic, if you're not being real, if you're not just in your face raw, then you're not doing it right. If you're trying to put on your best face and your best show and go out there and do it, you're going to struggle because that best face, that's not really you. I'm not saying you don't have a good face. I'm saying that Joe Rogan, who is a raw, cussing kind of a maniac, but we love him. He's got the number one podcast on the planet. And yeah. it's not because he pretends. It's not because he puts on a show. His Some of his podcasts are hours long because they are appropriate to the length of the subject matter. If it was a, a no-name, not worthwhile interview that he's doing, you better believe he'd cut it short. But the people that are interesting and the people that have give value and the people that are out there having a great connection, those podcasts would be longer because that's where the real value is at. So I got to say, Trish... Thank you so much for being on the show today. If you want to connect with Trish, we're going to have all our contact information in the show notes. If you want to contact with me, this is your call to action. Hit me up, send me a link, like me on any of the social media that I'm on. Please, dear God, subscribe to the podcast. You can hear more of these wonderful videos and we'll uh, love to hear from you next time. Thanks a lot, Trish. Thank you. You've been listening to The Nonprofit Architect. To listen to all our past shows, visit http colon forward slash forward slash nonprofitarchitect.org. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our show. Thank you. Thank you.